guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons. And in this set of videos, I'm going to show you how to put together what I call a field drawing. Basically, every project I do gets a field, field drawing. The only time that wouldn't be the case is if the project didn't have a field survey. That's pretty rare. And a field drawing is basically a data housekeeping tool or a record keeping tool. And essentially what the the field drawing lets you produce is a set of PDF sheets that show the current project control and uh, chronological history of the field surveys that have taken place on a project. So it gives you a quick snapshot, essentially, of the, of the field work that's been done on a job. And in theory, you could take those PDF sheets and link them to a project management GIS. Uh, but in practice, what we use them for here is uh, that's kind of our go-to destination if we've got a pick up or resumes field work on a project, we know where to go to get the current control and, and to get an overview of the field work that's been done to date on a job. So in this first video, I'm going to show you how we get a, a field drawing set up and, and start to basically flesh it out. So I'm going to go ahead and open my file explorer here. And we're going to go grab that template. So I have a template drawing that I like to use for field drawings. And I need to remember where I put it. Uh, All right, guys, sorry about that. Somehow uh, my template got deleted, so I've put that back. So we're going to go ahead and copy that template here. <clears throat> I just have the last date of the revision or update to the template, and then I just call it field <clears throat> is the name of the drawing. Excuse me. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, and then we're going to drop it into our job folder. So I typically keep this in my field folder. It's where my data collector files go. And I'm going to rename that. Well, it's already got today's date. So I usually rename it at the date that I'm working on it. And I just leave the name the same field. So we'll go ahead and open that. <clears throat> So when the drawing opens, you'll see that we have four or five layout tabs that should come in as part of this. So we have our control map, our field survey table, uh, the second field survey table layout tab, which actually has some, uh, that's if you have, um, it's set up for two tables, but usually you don't, you don't, you don't, you're only going to need one to start. But there's a second one in here if you need it. Just rename this to one. Then we've got a, a sheet for some notes on the control. And finally, a, a control table, control point table, which will, that gets created automatically. I'll show you how that works in a sec. All right, so if you go into model space of the drawing, it's uh, essentially empty except for these tables here. So this is the control point table, which we'll update here in a little bit, and the field survey table, which we will also update. Uh, but other, other than that, you should have a blank canvas. So uh, what we want to do, first thing, is we want to go ahead and import our control. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to make our control layer active. I'm actually going to change the name of that to just controls. We're not doing a boundary. We'll get this cleaned up a little bit. Okay, so we've got points control as our current layer. And we're gonna go ahead and import our points. So 
So I have a CSV file with my current control. Yeah, it looks like I'm in the right folder, so it's going to be this all control folder. And want to make sure that we pick point northing easting elevation description for our format. Make sure that we're in state plane coordinates. We are. I'm going to go ahead and import those. All right, so my points come in over here. So what I usually do without trying to move away from the microphone is uh, I just drag my tables over here kind of close to where my points are. So on this particular job, I had two sites that we're doing in the same survey. If there's a little space in between, that's okay. Now, <clears throat> we've imported our points now. But you can see they've come in with some, some different label styles. So we're just going to select all the points and make sure that they're all set to default. They are. And then we're going to come over here to our prospector. And we're going to come over here to BKF control. And we're going to update that. Can get rid of these other point groups. So we really should just have the one point group. All right. <clears throat> so I lost some points there. So we're just going to delete those and re-import. So we need to clean up the template a little bit so we don't have those pre-existing point groups in here, but that's fine. We're just going to re-import our file. All right. Okay, so if that's set up right, these points automatically go into the BKF control point group that you see here. We're just going to do an update on that real quick. And if they do go into the right point group, then they get this uh, marker style and label style automatically applied. Okay, so it shows the point number, the description, and the northern easting elevation, and it's got a little control symbol there. Okay, so that's step one. So the next thing we want to do is we just want to put on an aerial background. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and use the geolocation. We have a UAV aerial for this. Uh, it's ready, but uh, I mean, we, we've, we've flown it, but the ortho's not ready. So I'm just going to use the built-in geolocation here with Bing Maps. We're just using this as a background to give people an idea where the control's at on the site. And you'll see that here in a minute. All right, so then we're going to turn our geolocation off. And we're going to grab these images we just cropped out. And we're going to put them on the right layer, this VGIS data image layer. Okay. And um, all right, so got our points in here, got an aerial background. Now we want to go ahead and set up our control map. So I'm going to make this viewport active. I'm going to zoom extents at first. Oop. That's locked, so we got to unlock it. All right, and it looks like it's got a DV twist on it too, so we want to get rid of that. So we'll run the DV command, use the DV block, run a twist, put it at zero. All right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set up our first sheet here. And we'll try and pick a scale that works. I'm going to go with 1 to 100 first. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty close there. 1 to 100 is not going to work. Yeah, 1 to 200 is probably too big, but we'll try it. Yeah, so I'm probably going to do two sheets on this one. On this site. So I'm going to do a sheet there. And then I'm going to copy this. So 
So we'll call this control map two. We'll make this control map one. And then we'll uh, pan down here so we can get the rest of this site here. Okay, and then I'm going to make one more of these. Make a cop one more copy of this layout here. And we'll drag that over. Whoop. Drag this guy over here, maybe. And we'll call this three. Control map three. And then we'll uh, activate this viewport, pan over to this other site, probably get it all at 1 to 100, looks like. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this now and end the video. And in the second video of this set, we'll go in, we'll clean up these images a little bit so we don't have the white space. We'll turn off our frames. We'll get our control table set up. And uh, that'll probably be enough for that second video. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next video in this set.